Hello, this is MicroJ101, and today I'm just going to show you some of my um, collection of old ICs and other components. So, yeah. So here I've got some vintage can um, different chips and ICs. I think that these are actually mostly amplifiers. I think there's a couple comparators in here as well. But some of these are actually new and never been used before, like these. But other ones like this one obviously have been soldered off of something. And then over here we've got some transistors. So these are different, these are actually large metal can ones. And then we've got some, I think this is also metal, yeah that's a metal can, it's just painted black. Here's another old metal can, lots of different metal can ones, some little tiny metal cans. This is actually a cream maker ceramic transistor. I'm guessing maybe it was high frequency or high temperature or something. Not really sure. It's kind of cool though. These ones are like, also are kind of made out of cream sort of similar material to um, older ICs. And then these are actually from a little radio kit. So I've got a couple of those. These are actually, I'm not really sure how old these are, but they're actually a shunt resistor voltage uh, reference thingy. So it's got a little um, heat sensitive Zener diode in there and a little heating element and somehow it's a voltage reference thing and I think this is actually insulation around it basically so not really sure but and then here I actually cut one open just to see what it looks like inside so an IC and a transistor I was gonna put them under the microscope but I can't it doesn't work very well with the camera and here's some like uh, 2N3055 transistors and such. They were burned out, so I cut them open. And then I've got lots of ICs, tons and tons of these. So we've got different um, EPROMs here, which are erasable ROMs. So you would erase them with using light or, um, rather UV light. So I've got different ones of those. And then here we have some other, these are just kind of random chips. I really like these though. And these are mostly from like 1980s. So, here's 1981. EEPROM of some sort. It's an Intel. But it's quite pretty gold. And then this one it says battle actually. This is like a ceramic one as well. Very thin. And it's a Moss Tech. Never heard of that company before. And that's I guess it's 79. Here's a chip. Intel. I believe this is a microprocessor. 1982. And these are actually worth about $40 on eBay. And I've got six of them. So here's the rest of my collection down there. So I've got a bunch of those in there. So these are all different processors or yeah, just different ones. RAM and stuff like that. These are the ones with the windows. So the EEPROMs, lots of those. Some of them have never been used. So like these up here, they don't have a sticker on them. Some of them have all been programmed exactly the same thing. So these were programmed in 88. So just lots of different ones. These ones, the stickers have been peeled off. So I've got lots of different vintage or pretty old ICs.
different components. And I've got all these here, which are just plastic logic gates and amplifiers and all kinds of stuff. But, yeah, I've got lots of those. And then I've got, oh, here's some more ICs. And that one's kind of cool there. It's got lots of gold on it. Not sure if it's worth anything. These are mostly plastic here. And then these are more of the, I guess it's a ceramic of some kind. And then I've got some more PCBs as well. Like this one. You can see these transistors here are actually connected together so that they have the same, so that they're both at the same temperature. But this is 1970 Daytronic, which is actually, this is Daytronic as well. Which actually could be from the same no date on there though. So, but you can actually somewhat tell when a board I think this one may have been, I'm not sure if it's been computer generated or whether it was drawn up by somebody on a drafting table. The, the traces do look pretty perfect though, so not sure about that one. But I do have some like this one. Here, which I think this one's I think this one's about 79 yeah because most of the chips the date code is 79 <coughs> so I believe this board is probably about 79 1979 you can see it's got some metal can components on here as well as some dip but some of these transistors on these old boards have color codes on them, which I'm not really sure how that works. Yeah, these ones have blue and green. But this board, I'm pretty sure it was not done using any software. I'm pretty sure it was done using some by, by somebody with a drafting table. Because if you look at the traces, are not straight and it just like there's curves that are not perfect it's just awesome I don't know so I'm pretty sure this one was done by hand I mean look at, look at that trace right there it's not not the same width or right here there's a little corner there so it's not not perfect. So I'm pretty sure that one was actually done by hand. I believe. Not really sure what this board was for. Doesn't say on it. This board, I'm thinking it may have been done by hand, but I'm not sure. This one is some kind of a controller. MTS controller. But it's got tons of metal can and also some of these, which is that's where I got these from. 2N3638 transistors, and these are a sort of ceramic base. That's what these are from. But see, this board has more transistors that are color coded, but they also have the part number on the other side. So, not really sure. Here's some more color coded ones. But color coded kind of like resistors. So it could be a date code or something. Not really sure. I guess so. If it was a date code, they probably all have about the same ones. So not sure. But this one's got lots of metal can components. Okay, this other board here, you can obviously see that the components put on by hand because if you look at this metal can uh, I see here you can see the leads are not all in a circle like this one 
somebody painstakingly bent the leads so they'd fit into the holes. So that must have taken somebody a lot of work. But a lot of the components are not populated on here for some reason. So this one again, I'm not really sure whether it was done with software or probably not software would have been done with um, I'm not sure how they would have done that actually but this one looks a little bit more perfect like the traces are all about the same width and the same distance from each other so I'm not really sure on this one it looks pretty perfect though but again, the traces all have curves. There's not really any right angles. Here's another old board. This is actually from a audio amplifier. And again, these transistors have the color codes, even the large transistors. So. That's kind of odd how they have the different planes. Like, I'm not sure why they didn't fill that all in. Maybe to reduce capacitance or something like that. It's a little bit odd to me. Like here, I would have thought that they would have made this all one big piece. But they etched it all out for some reason. Yeah, maybe to reduce capacitance. But here's a newer board. I believe this one is uh, 1982. And this is actually a Nikon board made in Japan. But if you look at the back of this one, you can see all the traces are very, very symmetric, all the same size. Some of the curves are more right angle, kind of boxy. This one still has a lot of curves. So, this one was probably not hand done. Most likely. So, but yeah, that's my collection of. Oh, yeah. This really old or 19, I forget when it was made. Um, an IBM one megabyte sticker, and it actually has a real IBM chip in there. It's still got the original sticky back plate on it or back piece of paper. And I have the so here it is 1989. So, it's kind of cool. And then also they have another, on this website there's another one somewhere that it was, says it was given out at the Scout Jamboree. They were giving these out. So, kind of cool though. Not really sure where it came from, but um, it was given to me. So, kind of cool. And here are a couple old LEDs. So these ones here are plastic, but they've got very, very strong little leads on them, and they're not bright at all. They're really dim. So here's a little red one. And then these are, this is a little yellowish orange one. Just an early LED. And here's actually a LED in a metal can. Very early, I would say. At least I believe it's an LED. It doesn't actually work, but I think I remember taking it off of the front panel of something. So I'm pretty sure it is a indication LED of some type. Focus. Pretty cool.
cool. But that's that's my collection of old stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed. That's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep experimenting.